Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So this is part two of my entire fragrance collection. I hope that you watched part two and you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to link it somewhere up here or up here. Uh, definitely check it out. Today, we're going to continue. As you know, I'm doing my collection series in alphabetical order. And my next letter on the list is the letter E. Now, the first house that I have starting with this letter is Ellie Saab. And I have two fragrances from, from their private collection, I guess, the, the collection that's created by uh, Francis Kirkujan. One of them is Essence Number no. 1, Rose. This is a fragrance all about rose. There are really four different types of roses listed on Fragrantica for this scent, and it really smells like very rich red rose. It is deep um, it is almost a little bit ambery rose, I would say. Uh, for those of you that enjoy rose, this is a really um, a rose for a boss lady, I would say. That's sort of how I see this scent. The second one from this collection that I have is Essence Number no. 10, I think. And this is a Monday Tonka. This one is, of course, all about Tonka. Um, there's also, I actually don't remember what else is in here, maybe cacao or something like that. But really, this Tonka has a very, very chocolatey vibe. It's like there is chocolate added in here and it has a slightly bakery vibe. So it is sort of a sweet, but it is not overly sweet. Just a very rich, chocolatey Tonka. This one is really, really gorgeous. The next house that starts from letter E is uh, my last house <laughs> that starts with the letter E, and this is X Idolo, and the fragrance that I have is Love and Crime. This is, of course, a beautiful gourmand with uh, orange element. I think there's orange in here. There's obviously vanilla, I think caramel. This smells like a sweet orange pastry. Uh, very, very similar to Xerjov Lyra. Just very small differences between the two, really. Uh, but I love this type of scent, and I'm really happy to have this one. Next, we have letter F. And so the first house is Frappan. Frappan. I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly, but the fragrance is 1270. This is a gorgeous scent that, again, more people need to talk about. Um, this has a very strong note of pineapple. Uh, there is also some sweetness in here, and there is also some booziness in here. So uh, in the opening, uh, I really get a lot of pineapple, but as it starts drying down, I'm really get getting more sweetness and more of a boozy vibe. I would say this is a summer type of boozy scent because it is not overly heavy and not overly strong. I think it is perfect for summer. So again, this is 1270 from Frappan. Next house that starts with the letter F is the house of Frasai, a house that I discovered either late last year or early this year. I can't remember by now, but I have two fragrances from this house. The first one is Blondine. This is uh, a beautiful gourmand lily type of scent. Tiger lily is very strong in here, but then there are also notes of milk and butter and vanilla. So it is definitely very creamy, buttery, sweet uh, with um, the mix of that lily, which makes the scent very interesting. And I think uh, that's why I kind of fell in love with this one. My very first love from the house of Frasai was Tea Sun Dew, the fragrance that I knew I needed to have as soon as I tried it. Why? Because it's, <laughs> it's a gourmand, uh, but it's not overly sweet gourmand. It's kind of a, a little bit uh, spicy and a little bit sweet. Definitely some kind of um, pastry, but again, not overly sweet. Another gorgeous one from this house. 
Next one is the House of Frederick Mall. I only have one fragrance from this house and that's Mask Ravageur, another newer acquisition. This is definitely not for everyone. I know that on some people this really uh, opens up pretty uh, badly. Uh, so this is a scent that needs to be tried first, but uh, I really, really love it. It's it's warm, it's sweet, it's musky, it's um, a little bit spicy. It definitely has a slight animalic A edge. Um, this is the only fragrance that has this kind of animalic A edge that I actually enjoy, but I do like it. And it is a very, very uh, sexy scent. I think there's just just exude sexual energy. There's something about this scent that has it more than any other scent that I've tried. So this is Mask Ravageur from uh, Frederick Mall. The next house that starts with the letter F is Floraku, and this is one umbrella for two. This scent is very simple. Um, this really smells like blueberry muffin. I think there is a tea in here. There is blackberry, possibly vanilla, but really to me, it smells like blueberry muffin. Gorgeous. Okay, next house is Francis Kurkajan. I have four fragrances from his line. First one is Grand Soir, a fragrance that I originally didn't like and then tried it in uh, in a colder weather and really fell in love with it. This is, of course, about amber. There's also benzoin in here, vanilla, a few other notes. This is just a very sweet, smooth, warm, rich type of amber. The longer it sits on the skin, the better it becomes, the smoother and the sweeter it becomes. This is gorgeous. The next one from this house is, let's see which one I grabbed. This is Gentle Fluidity Gold. This is a very nice vanilla scent. It's not too overpowering. It is not too strong. I don't really remember all the notes that are in here um, other than the vanilla. There's some really interesting notes in here, but as always, blended beautifully. And this has a slightly burnt sugar vibe to me. So really, really love this one. This is a great vanilla for warmer weather, I think. Next one uh, is the last one that I purchased. This is Aqua Celestia Forte. This is a gorgeous, sweet, citrusy scent for the summer. It is so refreshing. Um, it is not too strong. It is kind of light, but at the same time, it is present. Uh, really beautiful, juicy citruses. Very much enjoy Aqua Celestia Forte. And the last one that I have is actually the very first one that I purchased from this house. This is Amorous Femme. Absolutely love this fragrance. It is, it's a very gentle, liquid fragrance that has a little bit of everything. It is a little bit uh, sweet. It is a little bit citrusy, a little bit floral, a little bit sweet, a little bit sparkly. Like I said, there's so many elements combined into this one scent and it just works. Uh, there is something a little bit magic about the scent. I think uh, not easy to describe, but I really, really love it. Okay, let's move on to letter G. And the first house that I have is Givenchy. I have three, well, kind of two fragrances, kind of three. I will explain in a second. The first one, let's talk about this one. This is Organza, and this is quite an old fragrance. Um, for those of you that have watched my channel for a while, I, I think I've told the story about this fragrance, that this was the very first present that my husband gave me when we started dating. That's really the only reason that I keep this fragrance I never liked the scent. You can see that I've actually worn it a couple of times. I attempted, you know, I tried to be nice and wear it, but this is just not my kind of scent. I really don't enjoy it. There are a lot of notes in here, but it's very floral, powdery, nutty kind of scent. Um, it has definite vintage vibe to me, just not my kind of thing. I don't enjoy it. I feel like it overpowers me, but obviously I keep it for sentimental reasons. Then I have two more, which are kind of the same. I have Andrew Dumont Le Secret. 
I have the newer version, the reformulated version, I guess, and I have the original version. Um, they are quite similar. Both of them are about uh, lemon tea with cranberries. Very refreshing kind of fragrance. Again, perfect for the office. Uh, for me, this is an easy reach. When I'm not sure what to wear, I often reach for this. Like I said, there isn't much difference between the two. I would say maybe the original one has a little bit more of cranberries. Maybe it's a touch more fruity and sweet, but overall, honestly, uh, it is really hard to tell the difference between the two. Next, we have the House of Gucci, and in all honesty, this is not really the house that I really vibe with. I've tried quite a few fragrances from this house, and, you know, majority of them I wasn't really blown away or I didn't like at all. So I only have one fragrance from this house. And really the only reason I have this one is because it was so hyped up and it was a, it is a discontinued scent that was really hard to find. So when I saw it, I just had to have it. This is Gucci 2 from Gucci. This is about, mostly about black currant. Uh, there are some other fruits in here. There is some musk in here. It almost, uh, in addition to black currant to me, it feels like it either has cassis or it has black currant leaf. It has a little bit of greenness or um, kind of earthiness to it. So it's not a very sweet black currant. It's a nice scent, but uh, is it worth all the hype that it received? Not in my mind. Next house uh, that I have starting from G is Gritty and the fragrance is Pomelo Sorrento. Um, really interesting looking bottle, definitely unique. This is about tea. Um, this is kind of a grapefruit tea. Uh, sparkly, fresh, uh, perfect for the summer. Really enjoy this one. I love that Instead of uh, your typical lemon or lime or bergamot, it has uh, grapefruit and pomelo, which is really, I think, um, a variation of uh, grapefruit or, you know, a fruit that smells very similar to grapefruit. Uh, so really nice, sparkly, uh, cold tea kind of fragrance. And now the last house, starting from the letter G, is the one where I have quite a lot of fragrances, although I used to have even more, but quite a few got decluttered. You probably guessed. This is, of course, the House of Guerlain. So let's start with the two that are sort of uh, very similar. I have the original Mon Guerlain and I have Mon Exclusive. Both of these are quite similar. They feature vanilla and lavender, so you get really sweet lavender. The main difference is that the Mon Exclusive also has, uh, I think, the note of butter, which is definitely evident. This one is kind of a little bit creamier, milkier, smoother. But overall, not a ton of differences between the two. Um, I really enjoy both, which is surprising because lavender is not my favorite note, but in these two, it works. Next, let's talk about two fragrances in these round bottles. I have terracotta and I have meteorites. So terracotta uh, has, I think, coconut. It has some uh, white florals like a tiara flower. Um, it has some citruses. This really smells like a beachy suntan lotion type of fragrance with a slight floral touch. Meteorites are really... I think made to smell like their uh, meteorites powder, which by the way, terracotta, I think was made to smell like their terracotta powder or bronzer. Um, so this one, it has iris, it has violet, it has green apple, which is very prominent in this fragrance. There are also some green notes in here. So uh, I think the apple and the green notes really tone down the sweetness and powderiness of iris and violet. And for me, make this scent much more pleasant. And lastly, I have four fragrances from their uh, private collections. One is from, I think it's called Elixir line. I I'm not sure. I could be wrong about this, but, um, oh, I think Elixir Chanel. Here we go. It actually says it on the bottle. The fragrance is Gourmand Coquine. This is, uh, obviously a Gourmand. It has chocolate, cacao, some vanilla. Um, it kind of has, uh, I think it has 
dark chocolate if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's milk chocolate, but either way, it's not too strong and it's not bitter and it has a bit of a bakery vibe as well as, as if you're kind of, to me, it makes me think of maybe eating some bread with some chocolate or maybe with a little bit of Nutella on top of it, something like that, but uh, done in a very elegant and sophisticated way. Really beautiful gourmand scent. The other three that I have are from their Le Art at Le Metier collection. I can never pronounce it properly, so let's see which one I grab first. This one is Angelique Noir. This is a green vanilla scent. It has vanilla, angelica. I think there's pink pepper in here as well, some other notes. Basically, it's a gentle, understated green vanilla that's not overly sweet. Um, to me, this vanilla has sort of a similar vibe to vanilla in Ani from Nishani. The next one is, of course, probably the most famous, famous fragrance and most hyped fragrance from this line, Spiritual's Double Vanille. This is a woody, boozy vanilla. Um, you know, I've wanted to get this fragrance for a really long time, couldn't find it for a long time, finally found it. Uh, I really, really liked it when I found it, but it really maybe left me slightly underwhelmed. I think because it was so hyped and I looked for it for so, such a long time, um, I had very, very high expectations. But uh, the more that I wear it, the more that I like it, and the more I start appreciating uh, the beauty of this fragrance. So uh, smoky, boozy, vanilla, gorgeous. And the last one from this collection is, oh, the bottles are everywhere. <laughs> is Cure Beluga. Uh, this one, I would say, is also kind of um, a slightly green vanilla with a touch of suede. So even though, you know, it has Cure, which is, I think, leather uh, in the title, it's not really leather. There's a very small touch of suede in here that is almost unnoticeable. And other than that, it is really vanilla. All of these fragrances... Are on a gentle side, they're kind of understated, very classy and elegant scents, but they're, none of them are beasts. None of them have uh, outstanding performance. So for those of you that um, performance is very important, just keep that in mind. For me, for some reason with this collection, uh, the, the scents are so beautiful and so special that I sort of uh, don't care as much about performance. And so it doesn't bother me uh, in this case, for some reason. After filming this video, while I was filming another part, I realized that I forgot to include one house starting from the letter G. So I'm filming it now and including it in this video. And I can't believe that I forgot this house because the two fragrances that I have from it, I absolutely love. The house that I'm talking about is Gallagher Fragrances. And as you know, I have two, Rosé All Day and Wicked Good. Rosé All Day is one of my top, top fragrances. It has rose, honey, brown sugar. There's a metallic note. There's apple crisp. And it's a, this amazingly magical combination of sweet and sour. This is also a beastly, beastly fragrance. The performance is out of this world. I love this one. The second one is also gorgeous, Wicked Good. This is about vanilla, chocolate, and tonka. It has beautiful, sweet milk chocolate. I wish that the chocolate would stay a little bit longer. It kind of disappears mostly uh, pretty quickly, and this becomes a uh, tonka and vanilla scent, but uh, th th there are some remnants of chocolate left behind. Overall, gorgeous gourmand chocolate scent. Let's move on to letter H. And the first house that I have starting from letter H is Hermes, and I only have uh, one fragrance from this house. This is Rhubarb Escarlate, Escarlate something like that. Uh, this is, as the name suggests, is all about rhubarb. It is fresh, juicy, slightly sour, slightly tart rhubarb. Very, very refreshing on a hot summer day. Doesn't have the best performance, but you know, I cover myself in this fragrance when I wanna wear it and it lasts a little bit better that way. 
The next one is his stores the perfum and the fragrance that I have is 1804. Again, this is a small 15 ml bottle, but because their fragrances come in either I think 100 ml or these 15 ml, I'm including it in my uh, full bottle collection. This uh, has a lot of notes. Uh, there are some fruits, there are spices, I think there's vanilla, a lot of other things. But really, at the end of the day, to me, this smells like a very, very spicy um, pineapple, maybe with a touch of patchouli. It has a bit of woodiness and earthiness in it. Yeah, for those that are looking for a slightly unusual pineapple, I would say this is a great one to try. The next letter is letter I. And the first house starting with this letter is Initio. And I only have one fragrance from this house. This is Psychedelic Love. Uh, this one is a fragrance that features the note of heliotrope very strongly. To me, this is really the main player here. So it is um, very almondy, a little bit powdery, uh, a kind of a nutty uh, with some vanilla and some depth to it. Really interesting scent. Wasn't a love at first sniff, but a fragrance that I really grew to love very much and made it my first purchase from the house of Initio. And one more house that I have starting from the letter I, this is Imaginary Authors. And I have two fragrances from this house that are somewhat similar, although different at the same time. I have Memoirs of a Trespasser and Whiff of a Waffle Cone. Um, Memoirs of a Trespasser is um, kind of a woody, smoky vanilla. Uh, it has that um, maybe slight burning fire type of smell, and it also reminds me of a burning candle. Whiff of a Waffle Cone, which I enjoy a little bit more than Memoirs of a Trespasser, is really like walking into an ice cream shop and you get the smell of ice cream together with this uh, waffle cone being made. Kind of a mix of the two. Uh, it's not overly sweet. It's not like you're just spraying yourself with, <laughs> you know, it's not like you're covered in ice cream. Uh, the waffle cone adds a really, really nice touch to this fragrance. And so I really enjoy it. And looking at the time, I think we're going to end it for part two. Again, don't want to make these videos too long. So please join me in part three, where I'm going to continue with the alphabet and continue with my fragrance collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!